All right, guys, analog signal coming into the TweetoSuite PLC. I have a word that I'm looking at, and I have set this word up to go between 0 and 1,000. So in order to check that out, let's go into here to monitor my hardware configuration. Uh, I'm live now with the PLC, so what's cool is I can check all my settings here. These are my digital inputs from a previous program. I'm just going to go over here to my analog inputs. And I was fooling around with uh, the analog inputs and could not get this guy to actually come in. So I was trying zero. I thought there was a fault on uh, my input zero, so I tried number one. I uh, ended up that I forgot to provide my analog card with 24 volts DC. But I'll walk you through that and see how I and I'll show you how I screwed it up. So I'm looking at this input right here. Percent IW 1.1. Okay, so I'm looking at an entire word. I've gone to uh, 0 to 10 volts. This guy is able to do 0 to 10 volts or a 4 to 20 milliamp signal. So I'm going to use the 0 to 10 volt first. I went with a customized range. So you can go with uh, your normal range or your customized range. So I went with a range from 0 to 1,000. 0 being 0 volts and 1,000 being 10 volts. Then I could get a number of different gradations in there between my 0 to 10 signal. Okay, so once this is set up, and the way that you do that is, uh, let me just disconnect here for two seconds. Okay, we've gone through this guy before. Come on. But in addition to your PLC, you also have to grab that I.O. interface. And you find that here at Describe. So we'll click on Describe. There's my standard PLC that we looked at in all the previous videos. And here is my analog card right here, TM2AMM6HT. Okay, so you find that there by putting in your, um, I believe right here, your serial expansion. No, is it? Let's see. Expansion modules, analog expansion modules. So here, expansion modules, analog expansion modules. Uh, and I scroll down, and mine was the TM2AMM6HT. Left click on this guy, bring it over, drop it onto the page, and you'll have your analog card. Okay? This is physically tied into the PLC. There's a little uh, connector here, and that's where I went off. I thought that because this power light was on, that this was already getting 24 volts DC. It was not. I'll show you how. Um, so with this guy, we need to double click on here. Now, I've already done this in the program, but you can name your an analog inputs. You can change from 0 to 10 to 4 to 20. You can customize your range, and then you hit apply. Once you've done that, then you're ready to rock and roll. With the program, I put in, uh, and watch this, I've done percent IW 1.1. When I hit equals, you'll see that it changes the, the value to this. Okay, so let me hit equals here. Okay. As soon as I change that and hit enter, it changes it to percent IW0.1.1. Okay, that's the appropriate address. I thought that was why I wasn't seeing my 0 to 10 volts, but it wasn't. It was the fact that I didn't give this guy my analog card 24 volts DC. Okay, so I'm just addressing these guys all the same, percent IW1.1. And on the first one, I'm saying that if it is uh, less than, or equal to 250, and in my range that would be two and a half volts, then fire on my first light. If that word, with that range of zero to a thousand, is greater than 250, but less than or equal to 500, so greater than two and a half volts, but less than or equal to five volts, fire on the second light. And then if it's greater than 500, which corresponds to my five volts, or less than or equal to 10 volts, then fire on my third light. Okay, once that's there, you can then analyze your program, make sure that you know you don't have any problems whatsoever. And we'll go to debug. We can connect in with the serial cable or with the ethernet. I'm gonna connect in with the ethernet now. We'll hit okay a couple times here. Takes a little bit of time to come in. 
Okay, and then we're going to put it into run mode. If you don't put it into run mode, then I don't believe this value changes. Here, let's see. If I change, if I move this around. Oh, it does. You can see that value changing right there. Okay, but it's not affecting my program whatsoever. So you can see the signal on my 0 to 10 volts changing there from 0 to 1,000. But it's not affecting anything in the program here. So let's put it into run mode. Get her rocking and rolling. Just waiting for that green light to turn on. Come on, buddy. Nice. Now, this input here, or this animation table, you can go here to manage your animation tables. Um, and, I mean, this is from a previous program that I was doing. Essentially, all I'm doing is I'm just looking at this input right here, this analog input. All the rest of this is noise from a previous uh, previous program that I was working on. Okay, so we're looking at this input here. And the way that you can see that while you're doing your program is you come down here to um, Animation Tables. And you click on that, and it brings up that animation table. And then you should be able to see this value change. So... If it's less than 250 or less than 2.5 volts, then the first light turns on. Well, it's clearly less than that. So I'm going to go up to something that's greater than 250. And with this, uh, this analog inductive sensor uh, is very sensitive. It only goes from 0 to, uh, to 7 mils. So I'm going to slowly increase the distance of the piece of metal from the inductive sensor. And then once we get above 250, we're at 221 right now. Once we get above 250, that second light's going to turn on. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, from there, from 2.5 volts up to 5 volts. So I'm just slowly moving that piece of metal away. And once we get above 5 volts, then the third light will turn on. Ah, uh, yes. And then anywhere from there to my full 10 volts, that third light stays on. Okay, going back down, if we go down below 500, which is below 5 volts, then that third light should turn off, second light should turn on, so we're getting close, just slowly moving this piece of metal, there we go. Okay, so we're at 489 now, so that's like 4.89 volts. Uh, and as we drop down below 2.5, ah uh, yes, that first light turns on. And then from there all the way down to zero. And I can't get all the way down to zero uh, right now. I believe there's a potentiometer on the PLC that I can play around with. Um, so I can zero that um, that input. But right now I'm getting uh, 0.27 volts for when the piece of metal is directly in front of the sensor there. Awesome. Okay, let me stop the video here and I'll show you the voltage change. Um, and we'll do a picture in picture so you can see the voltage change on the meter and how that's changing on the actual program here. Okay, so let me start off with uh, this sensor here. So I have an analog sensor. Uh, this is a three-wire sensor, and this guy is able to punch out 0 to 10 volts or 4 to 20 milliamps, depending on which output I'm using. Right now, I've, I've supplied it with 24 volts, and I'm taking the signal off of Q1, and Q1 provides me with a 0 to 10 volt signal, and the maximum sensing range on this guy is about 6 or 7 mils. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place that right here on my aluminum channel. And then I'm going to butt that right up against my piece of metal there. Okay, so right there I just have a, a piece of galvanized steel similar to the ones that you've seen in uh, the previous videos. Okay, so this is from that Festo sensor unit. And I'm just going to slide that in in front of the inductive sensor. Okay, so as you can see, the, if I just move the, the camera over a touch, it is butted right up against the, the piece of metal there. And at that point, I have zero travel. There's a kind of a ruler there on the bottom that I can keep track of my travel of the actual unit. Let me just get these wires out of the way. And so I'm literally going to be moving this about six or seven mils and I'll see what the voltage is. Now the voltage should mimic exactly the value that you see on the screen there from the PLC. 
So I'm looking at the output going to my PLC, and that is coming off of, in this case, Q1 and my common. And let me just move these meter leads out of the way. And right now I have the smallest distance between the sensor and the piece of steel. And so I have a basically minimal voltage there, 0 0.03 uh, or 0 0.3 volts. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly increase the, the distance between the plate and the actual sensor. Let me just put my PLC into run mode now. Okay, so now we're in run mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly move the piece of steel away. And you'll see that this value right here, right, this value right here that is similar on every one of my inputs there, that's looking at my input from my analog card. If I want to look at the uh, animation tables, then I'll bring them up here. Easy now. So I clean this up. Sorry, I had that all that forward reverse stuff on there before. So now we just have that analog input. And we can see that this value right here, right, 29, matches with what's on the voltmeter there. So 0.3 is the same as like 0.29. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to slowly increase the, the distance between the sensor and the piece of steel. And we'll see that this value goes up. This value will be mimicked on every one of my inputs here because they're all looking at the exact same word here on my analog card. And when it gets to uh, greater than two and a half volts, but less than five volts, then the second light is going to turn on. Okay, so as I move this, you can see that the voltage is slowly increasing, right? There I have 1.2. The resolution on my meter is a little less than actually on the, the PLC there. So I got 1.2 volts, 1.2 on the PLC. Okay, then I'm increasing to 2, 2.3, 2.4, 2.5. And at 2.5, I'm equal. can't believe I actually stopped at that value. So it's equal. So the first light is still on. So you can see that this value right here and my meter are mimicking each other. Okay, I'm now going to go above 2.5 volts, and the second light's going to turn on. Beautiful. Okay. What do we have? 4.1, 4. 411 on... The PLC. So remember that my range is from 0 to 1,000, so that this value here matches exactly with what the meter is showing. Okay, I'm now going to go above 5 volts. Okay, so we're climbing in value, right? 4.5, 4.8. Right? You can see that exact value on the PLC there. And then when I go above 5 volts, the, sec the third light is going to turn on. Beautiful. 7.6. Awesome. Very cool. Going up to 9 volts now. 9.2, you can see that value mimicking on the, the PLC there, and we'll go up to 10 volts, and you can see that we're at the maximum of 1,000. Now, I can go above that value, but the PLC range is only from 0 to 1,000, right? So it can only read 0 to 10 volts. Okay, again, going down in value, we're going to get to something that's less than 5 volts, okay? Six, six and a half, five, five point six, and when I get below five, the second light turns on. Anywhere between five and two and a half volts. Sorry, a little bit too fast. So five and what do we got? Two point six. As soon as I go below two and a half volts, the first light turns on, and then from there down, you can see the value on the screen mim mimicking exactly what we see on the meter. Awesome. So now we've got a way to take uh, an analog 0 to 10 volt signal, put it into the PLC. Next step would be then to put it into the HMI and have uh, an image that changes with that voltage as it goes through. But that's pretty cool so far. Let me just show you the wiring so far for this guy. So if I go here to uh, my Word document, this is the wiring that I was going off of for the analog card. So you can see here that I'm using my first input here, or I guess the second one, but V1, right? So I need to have uh, the positive signal going into V1. So I have a sourcing input. The negative is going to the common. And I had that set up, but below here, you see this 24 volts? 
I didn't provide that analog card with that 24 volts DC. I was under the impression that that 24 volts DC was only required if I was having this these outputs turn on and having that output go out. So I thought this was the source for just the output. But this is the source for the entire card. So I don't know what I was thinking. There was a light on that said power. I thought it was already getting 24 volts from the original uh, PLC. Um, and so it took me forever to figure out that all I need to do is just provide it with 24 volts. So there's my source there. And then I have my sensor set, set up so that I have my positive signal, my 0 to 10 volts going into uh, my V1. And then the negative there is going into the common. I have a three wire sensor. So it's basically set up like this, where I have positive and negative providing my 24 volts into the sensor. And then my output, in this case Q1, is going to the PLC. And the PLC and the negative, so the common of the PLC and the negative, are jumpered together. All right, guys, I think that's pretty good. We'll end it there. Uh, the next video will be on uh, how to take the same uh, sensor. So we're going to take that same analog sensor, and we're going to do the 4 to 20 output. And we'll just change this input here from 0 to 10 to 4 to 20. All right, guys, thanks for your patience. We'll see you in the next video.